What's up YouTube? Back here with another video today. In today's video we're going to be working on upgrading the fuel system in the Lightning. It's a much needed thing. I've been kind of procrastinating and dragging my ass to do it, but I need to get it done because the blower and mid plate are on their way back and we should have that back sometime later this week and be able to put it all together this weekend. So I need to get the fuel system upgrades done that we want to do. I'm going to go over everything we're doing, how to do it, why you want to do it and all that stuff towards the end. I put all the information stuff at the very end. So those who are not really interested in that can just check out the install, but it's a lot of good info. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. If you want to know all about the limitations of the stock fuel system, when you should upgrade, what you should do to upgrade all that good stuff that'll all be at the end. So make sure you wait till the end and check all that out. But we are going to go ahead and get to the install of what we have. I'll show you what we got. We'll get it installed. But first, make sure you drop a like on this video, guys. It really helps the video out. Just take one second, go down there, clip that thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. If you haven't already, also go down there and subscribe so you can subscribe for more and check out all our other videos. But let's go ahead and dive right into this install. All right, guys. So here's everything I got. I got a set of 97 rails. You can get these off of a 1997 to 1998, anything with the 5.4 liter. That's the Expedition, F-150, all that stuff. Got 97 rails. The benefit of these is it, this flange here allows you to run an aftermarket regulator. The stock flange does not. You can see the stock regulator is actually right welded onto the rails. So it's one piece. And there's no aftermarket support for that whatsoever. So you have to switch to 97 rails. They flow the same, there's no difference in flow. It just allows you to run an aftermarket regulator, which we got an Aeromotive, came with the gauge. And then we got a six and return line with the OEM style fittings that allow it to mount right up. And we'll put all the part numbers to everything in the description, all the links and stuff like that. So if you're interested, you can do the same thing. Um, fuel line disconnect kit. And then we got some oil treatment and that's basically i'm just going to use that to lube up all the o-rings so they don't tear when we're installing everything but basically we'll start with the regulator we got an air motive regulator you're also going to have to order this gasket right here it did not come with this black gasket so the bottom right here this oval one it came with the o-rings for this stem here but nothing to seal this up so when you mount it to the rail it could leak out of there. Basically, the OEM regulator has this O-ring thing that sits in this counter bore, but they do not sell it separate, so you'd have to buy a whole other OEM regulator, and I'm not doing that for an O-ring. So basically what it is, I found this gasket, and it should work very well, and it's basically gonna seal it up right around here, and I'll put the link to the gasket in the description as well. But that's the only thing you'll need to order is this little gasket here. Mounts directly to the rails. It's not a remote regulator or anything like that. One to keep it simple. Now, the tricky thing is, it came with this gauge, and um, the regulator is for a Mustang, which is on the driver's side, so the gauge would be facing towards you. However, on our trucks, it's on this side, so the gauge port is facing behind, and you can't see the gauge. Now, what I did for that is I just went to the store, it's eighth inch MPT thread, and I just got a 90 degree elbow and a coupler that goes straight and positioned it that way it is sticking out to the side and I'll be able to read it like that. It's pretty simple. You'll just want to go get yourself those fittings. I'll put a link to all that in the description and then use some high temperature thread sealant to seal all the threads up. And when you position the gauge, when it's mounted on the rail like that, you're going to want it facing straight at you to the side. That's how it has to be oriented for it to work properly. And this little valve thing towards the top. So basically 90 degrees and towards the top. But pretty simple, it's not bad. Just went to Lowe's and picked up all those fittings. I'll link them all in the description. Super simple. But, so to get started, what we're gonna do first is we are gonna get under the truck. I have it jacked up a little bit in the rear and we're gonna take a look at what we got going on under there. All right, so we slid ourselves under the truck. To give you some perspective of how we're looking at this, the front of the truck is down there basically slid in from the driver's side, went underneath the gas tank and up, and there's this little pocket here, kind of behind the exhaust and the drive shaft. So I'm looking at the gas tank from the passenger side, basically. 
It's very tight under here. Um, that's the fuel hat there. Move this wire down. I don't know how much you guys can even see of this, but hopefully you guys can see the fuel lines there. And I believe the return line is going to be this one towards the back of the truck to throw this one away. And it's basically held on by those, it's like a weird little clip. You basically release it and push it, and then the fuel line should slide off. It's hard to explain, but once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. So it's stupid little plastic things that hold the feet, that hold the line onto the little nipple thing that's on there. I know, great terminology, but if you find yourself not able to work in this little space, the other option is it's just two bolts, one here and one there. You can always undo those, put a jack under the tank with some plywood or something to distribute the load and lower the tank some to give you extra room. But I don't think I'm gonna have to do that. Perks of being a skinny man is I think I can get up in here just fine and work with that little bit of space we have. But basically we're gonna disconnect the return line there. And then there is a section I'll show you in the middle. We're gonna disconnect it disconnect it up at the rails and basically take the OEM hard line out. After you disconnect it up at the fuel hat, you can disconnect it there. It's like kind of towards the middle. You can see the fuel, the filters there. Basically the return line is the line without the filter. The filter is your feed line. So the other lines your return. So like I said, I showed you the one to disconnect up at the hat. You disconnect it there in the center. And then we'll have to disconnect both of them from up here anyways to get the rails off. But for now, I am gonna work on getting the hard line out. I'm not gonna film all that because it's gonna be a pain the way it is already with it being such close quarters, but I'll come back to you when I got the hard line out. All right, so we got that half disconnected. Now we're gonna come up here and disconnect these two lines here. And basically you just pop these little clips off, use your fuel line disconnect tool, slide it underneath there and it should slide right off. And we're going to do that and then pull out the rest of the hard line. All right, so that's the rest of the hard line here. Wasn't too bad. There's just a bunch of clips along the way you'll have to push it out of. The hardest one was the one near the motor. It's kind of hard to get it out of there. I had to use an Allen wrench, kind of go behind it, pry it to get it to pop out. But super easy. It is the rightmost line. That's your return. You'll disconnect that. Disconnect it out of all the little clips in the center from the fuel hat. Boom hard lines out didn't have to do any cutting anything like that did have to do some maneuvering but it did come out now all we got to do is pop the feed line off unbolt the rails and pop the rails off of the injectors we're gonna hopefully the injectors will stay in the manifold and we can just pop it up and off of the injectors that would be nice so we're hoping but really wasn't too bad guys pretty easy um, yeah so we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you how to do fuel line disconnect tools, super simple. So you just use your fuel line disconnect tool, pop it right over there, you push it basically underneath the spring and the line should come right out. Just like that, pretty simple guys. Gas will get, a little bit of gas will still come out, but it's not a big deal. You just have a towel ready if you wanna wipe it up, which we did. These little things are a little bit of a pain once your hands are slippery, but they work really well. So. so that's disconnected. Now it's basically four bolts that hold it to the, the intake manifold. And then we're just gonna try to get some leverage and pop them off the injectors and it should come right off. All right, so I got a little bit ahead of myself. I started getting in the zone and I didn't film it, but the new rails are on already as well as the aftermarket regulator. Uh, the rails came off real easy. Just pop them all up and they should come right off. The only other thing I had to do was I had to disconnect the heater hose right there because there's no way to really shimmy the rails around it. So I just disconnected it, slid the hose off a little bit, put a towel under there and just let it come out little by little. You'll get about two cups full of coolant, maybe that come out. And then you can pop that off and pop the rails off. There's the old ones right there. You can see what I was talking about with the difference in the mounting style. Oh, it's welded right to the rails. And then this comes out with a snap ring versus the flange. But it is mounted up, good to go. Rails are on. We used that oil treatment. It's almost like a thick corn syrup. 
Just put it on all the O-rings to lube it. That way they don't tear when you push the rails back on them and you seal everything up and all that stuff. So the rails are on, everything's buttoned up up here. Now we are going to run the return line and wanted to show you guys how these fittings work. Basically this is the fitting that connects to the rails and you'll just screw that into one side. Now since these are and fittings, you don't need any kind of sealant. It basically seals on the taper. If you want, you can put just a dab of oil on the threads to kind of lube it up, but you don't need any sealant. So this is the, this is the connection for the other end. And basically what this does, let me pull it out of the package real quick. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. Bitch. All right, there we go. So what this does, is it actually has O-rings inside of the fitting. That way you can slide this over the, I don't know how to explain it, but the hard line that comes out of the hat has like a little nipple. You'll slide that over the nipple, then this will slide over the back and you'll tighten it up and it'll tighten it down and seal it basically on the little flange. You'll know what I'm talking about when you get there, but you basically just slide this over, tighten it down, and then this end screws into the other end of your hose. So we're gonna go ahead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this end on first and run it, feed it down through the engine bay, then we'll run it, and then I'll show you the, the fuel hat side when we're done with that. But I'm going to go ahead and come back to you guys when this is connected and ran down because I need both my hands. And then we'll get up under the truck and finish this up. I don't know how much you guys can see. Oh, I can't see anything up there. Okay. Alright guys. So we're under the truck. We ran it basically right alongside of the feed. And zip tied it to the feed all the way down. We used the same brackets and everything. Ran it down. You come right next to the feet again. And then we actually ended up with a bunch of extra. About a foot more than you need. So what we did is we kind of looped it back into the frame there. I don't know if you can, can really see anything. But we had it come down next to the feet. And basically push the extra back into the frame there. And then just ran it right along the bottom there, right? See, there's the fuel filter right there underneath. Ran it right up parallel with the feed. Let me scooch back. Uh, very tight fit under here. All right, so everything's connected. If you guys can see. All right, guys, so we're all done. Everything went pretty good. Can't really think of any problems we had. I mean, the biggest issue was just running the line and trying to get your arms up in there. I wanted to put zip ties every so often, and it's just a really pain in the butt to get in there, but even my long skinny arms had problems. So, I mean, that might give you a little bit of an issue, but other than that, it really wasn't too bad. Everything went according to plan. Um, I did want to kind of go over fuel system and like the limitations. And basically, the reason why we're upgrading is because we were riding the limit. I mean, some trucks do okay with the stock lines, regulator and return line, and some don't. It's pretty much hit or miss. And I figured while it's down, we may as well just take any ifs out of the equation and just do it now. Um, yeah, it just I, it depends on your tuner for one, how he's gonna tune. When you put Walbro 255s in, some tuners like to run them 100%, and then that will definitely overrun your regulator and return. We actually ran ours in the stock voltage system, which a lot of people don't like to do. Some do, some don't, and it ran fine. But some people have issues, some people don't. It seems to be hit or miss depending on the truck and circumstances. So we went ahead and just took care of it. Before we have any problems, I'm done having problems. May as well just do preventative rather than you know wait for a problem to arise and then fix it. So went ahead and fixed it. But basically, your stock rails and your stock rails and feed line are good for 600 plus horsepower, easy. I think they said 650, 700 is the limit of those. The problem is the regulator and return line. They get ran, they get overran pretty easily once you hit mid 500s maybe, low 500, mid 500. And uh, of course you have to replace the rails in order to put an aftermarket regulator. So 97 rails flow the same. 
Regular should be way good now. And the Aeromotive should be good. You're not going to overrun that. Um, six and return, I think, is good for 700 horsepower ish. Your stock return, I think, is only good for, like, like I said, low 500s probably. If you're running Wabros at 100%, probably going to overrun it. So you're going to need to replace it. But basically, in the description, before I muck all this up with misinformation, I'm going to put a link and it's to some really good information. It's a complete write-up about everything you'd want to know about lightnings. I highly suggest anyone who's going to do anything to the lightning, they must read this first. Super, super good information. Huge write-up. I mean, the dude wrote a book. So I'm going to leave that in the description. Anything you need to know is there. A lot of good information. It's like the Bible for these trucks. So make sure you go down there and check it out, especially if you have a lightning. Don't do anything to you read that book, that, that post. I mean, it's well worth it. A lot of good information in there. I don't want to muck it up, say something wrong. Sometimes when I'm talking on camera, my mouth seems to go faster than my brain. I said, but why the hell did I say that? But anyways, so that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, hit that thumbs up. It really helps it out. And uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you next time.